Hello friends. So in the previous class we have seen the skeletal framework of larynx and this class we are going to see the joints, ligaments, membranes, blood supply, nerve supply and some clinical aspects of the larynx. Coming to the joints of larynx, the laryngeal joints include paid cricothyroid and cricoaretinoid joint. <clears throat> so in this cricothyroid joint we have seen the inferior thyroid horns which are extending downwards and they are going to articulate with the cricoid cartilage and forms cricothyroid joint. And the movements of this cricothyroid joint are rotatory movement and gliding movement. So in this first image you can identify how these two movements takes place. Next cricoaretinoid joint. So cricoid cartilage posteriorly, posterior part of the cricoid cartilage is called as laminae, the broader part. So above the cricoid laminae, we can identify the two arytenoid cartilages are resting over it and forms the joint, cricoarytenoid joint. So the movements of this cricoarytenoid joint are rotatory movement in which the arytenoid cartilage moves around a vertical axis, thus abducting or adducting the vocal cords. So they are moving over the cricoid cartilage. So this movement is called as rotatory movement uh, carried out by this cricoarytenoid joint. Next thing we are going to see arytenocorniculate joint. Arytenocorniculate joint so the base is resting over the cricoid laminae whereas the apex part apex of arytenoid cartilage is projecting upwards so this is articulating with the corniculate cartilage so here joint is forming is called as arytenocorniculate joint. Here you can see clearly the arytenocorniculate cartilage. In the first image we are seeing from anterior. In the second image we can see the posterior view of the arytenocorniculate and cricoarytenoid joints. <coughs> so the cricothyroid, cricoarytenoid and arytenocorniculate joints are innervated and they are supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve which arise either independently or from the branches of the nerve to the laryngeal muscles. So here you can see the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Yes. So here left side after forming a loop around the arch of iota, the recurrent laryngeal nerve which is extending upwards and supplies to the three joints. Then coming to the ligaments. So the skeletal framework of the larynx is joined to surrounding structures by extrinsic membranes it is also interconnected by intrinsic ligaments and fibroelastic membranes of which thyrohyoid and quadrangular and thyrohyoid and quadrangular membranes together with the conus elasticus are the most significant membranes. So first I will explain you the thyrohyoid membrane. So superior border of the thyroid laminae is, uh, is facing upwards and it is giving attachment to a membrane called as thyrohyoid membrane. Thyrohyoid membrane. So this thyrohyoid membrane which is extending upwards and it is reaching to the hyoid bone. So that is about thyrohyoid membrane. And the next one, this thyrohyoid membrane is pierced by internal branch of superior laryngeal nerve. It is passing through the thyrohyoid membrane. Then comes Another structure which is passing through the thyrohyoid membrane is superior laryngeal artery. Superior laryngeal artery and we can see internal branch of superior laryngeal nerve. These two structures are passing through the thyrohyoid membrane and supplies to the structures. <clears throat> then cricotracheal ligament. Cricotracheal ligament. So between the cricoid cartilage means the lower part of the cricoid cartilage and the first tracheal ring. Uh, first tracheal ring we can identify this ligament called as cricotracheal ligament. Then thyroepiglottic ligament. This ligament already have seen them. So the stalk, the lower end of the epiglottis is called as stalk of epiglottis which is extending downwards and is reaching to the internal surface of laminae of thyroid cartilage. And it is these two are connected by a ligament called as thyroepiglottic ligament thyroepiglottic ligament here I have labeled it next hyoepiglottic ligament so from the anterior surface of the epiglottis and the body of the hyoid bone they are connected by a ligament called as 
hyoepiglottic ligament then cricothyroid ligament so cricothyroid ligament from the superior border of the cricoid cartilage and the inferior border of thyroid cartilage is they are connected by a ligament called as cricothyroid ligament so uh, center part is it is thicken and form uh, and appears like a thick cord and it is called as conus elasticus so coming to the intrinsic ligaments and membranes the parts of the broad sheet of fibroelastic tissue which forms the inner tube of laryngeal cavity outside its mucous lining this fibroelastic tube is however interrupted on each side then cricovocal membrane cricovocal membrane the part above the sinus above the laryngeal sinus is called as quadrat or quadrangular membrane and part below the sinus is called as cricovocal membrane and it is also called as conus elasticus so it is extending upwards and medially from the upper border of the arch of cricoid cartilage here i am showing you in this image and then it is extending upwards and runs posteriorly its upper edge is free and it is attached anteriorly to the posterior surface of thyroid cartilage so in this image anteriorly you can identify thyroid laminae so that is reaching to the internal surface of thyroid laminae then is extending posteriorly now i have labeled it the arytenoid cartilage anterior process called as vocal process so this cricovocal membrane which is extending upwards from the cricoid cartilage so this is a sagittal section i am showing you then it is extending upwards and reaching to the internal surface of the thyroid laminae then it is running posteriorly and is reaching to the vocal process of arytenoid cartilage okay so that is about the crico vocal membrane then it is slightly thickened to form the vocal ligament the fold of the mucous membrane over this ligament forms the vocal fold then vocal ligament so vocal ligament is made up of yellow elastic tissue and extends antero posteriorly from posterior surface of thyroid cartilage to the vocal process of arytenoid cartilage that is about the vocal ligament <coughs> then quadrangular membrane so the quadrangular membrane extends from the sides of epiglottis to the arytenoid cartilage so definitely you all remember something a fold called as ary epiglottic fold so this quadrangular membrane extends from the sides of epiglottis to the arytenoids so its lower edge is free and attached anterior to the posterior surface of thyroid cartilage that is called as quadrangular membrane posteriorly to the lateral surface of arytenoid cartilage in front of the muscular process exactly its lower edge is thickened to form vestibular ligament then muscles muscles coming to the muscles extrinsic muscles so all the extrinsic muscles are paired and include this palatopharyngeus salpingopharyngeus tylopharyngeus thyrohyoid and sternothyroid so sternothyroid thyrohyoid we have seen which are attaching to the oblique line of thyroid laminae whereas stylopharyngeus which is extending from the styloid process to the pharynx and salpingopharyngeus which is also extend is a vertical fold where we can identify the nasopharynx there is also a muscle of the extrinsic muscle of the larynx and palatopharyngeus which is extending from the palate <coughs> then intrinsic muscles so the they attaches the intrinsic muscles are attached the laryngeal cartilage to each other and are responsible for their movements their main functions are opening and closing the laryngeal inlet what is laryngeal inlet i will explain you shortly abduction and adduction of the vocal cords and increase and decrease of the tension increase or decrease the tension of the vocal cords three functions remember opening and closing then abduction and reduction of the vocal cords or vocal folds okay anything so increase or decrease the tension of the vocal cords now let us see one by one so first muscles that open open or close the laryngeal inlet so oblique arytenoid here i am showing you an oblique muscle here so these are oblique arytenoid and ary epiglotticus so two muscles you remember oblique arytenoid and ary epiglotticus these muscles are responsible for the closing of the laryngeal inlet here you can see that oblique arytenoid and then thyro epiglotticus thyro epiglotticus is a muscle which is responsible for opening of the laryngeal inlet then muscles that abduct and adduction of the vocal cords 
one is posterior cricoretinoid these are very 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 important muscles posterior cricoretinoid muscles abduct the vocal cords they are responsible for the abduction movement okay safety muscles of the larynx so this posterior cricoretinoid muscles are called as uh, safety muscles of the larynx so you no need to remember the origin and insertion of all these muscles you just remember the muscle name exactly posterior cricoretinoid so this posterior cricoretinoid contract muscular process of the both retinoid cartilage so muscular process means the process which is extending laterally so it is cricoretinoid from the posterior part laminae from the laminae of the cricoid cartilage it is extending upwards and it is running laterally and reaching to the lateral process means the muscular process of retinoid cartilage and then as a result the vocal process rotate laterally means abduction of the vocal cords providing wide diamond shaped opening of the glottis okay then if posterior cricoretinoid muscles got paralyzed what happens so then if this posterior cricoretinoid muscles got paralyzed immediately the adductor muscles adductor muscles they takes the upper hand and the person die why because adductor muscles means adduction the two vocal cords vocal folds they come near to each other so the air does not passes inside the respiratory passage so the person will die immediately so that's why posterior cricoretinoid muscles are called as safety muscles of the larynx then lateral cricoretinoid muscles so these lateral cricoretinoids they act more if posterior cricoretinoid muscle got paralyzed muscles got paralyzed so lateral cricoretinoid muscles they adducts the vocal cords then transverse retinoid this transverse retinoid also responsible for the adduction of vocal cords <coughs> then muscles that increase or decrease the tension of vocal cords so cricothyroid tenses the vocal cords so tuning fork of the larynx this muscle is called as tuning fork of the larynx and it is supplied by external laryngeal nerve then action you can see here is yes, cricothyroid muscle cricothyroid muscle then vocalis so vocalis it tenses the vocal cords it is supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve the segmental tension of the vocal ligament helps in the modulation of the voice okay then thyroretinoid it relaxes the vocal cords it relaxes the vocal cords so these are the main functions you remember opening and closing of the laryngeal inlet abduction and adduction of the abduction or adduction of the vocal cords next increase and decrease in the tension of vocal cords these are the three main functions now coming to the nerve supply all the intrinsic muscles of the larynx are supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve except cricothyroid it is supplied by external laryngeal nerve okay laryngeal cavity what is this cavity so it is extending from the inlet of larynx See here i am showing you an arrow the red color arrow that pointed and showing you the opening laryngeal pharynx opening laryngeal inlet so from the inlet it is communicating with the lumen of laryngeal pharynx to the lower border of cricoid cartilage lower border of cricoid cartilage so that is about entire this part is called as laryngeal cavity so boundaries what are the boundaries of the laryngeal cavity anteriorly we can identify epiglottis and paired cartilage posteriorly we can identify ary inter arytenoid fold of the mucous membrane so ary epiglotticus muscle which is extending from the apex of arytenoid cartilage to the lateral ends of epiglottis so that ary epiglotticus muscle is covered by the mucous membrane and appears like the fold called as ary epiglottic fold this right and left ary epiglottic folds are connected in the middle so mid middle arrow i am showing you showing you posterior inter arytenoid fold then lower part lower part we can identify lateral on each side ary epiglottic fold of the mucous membrane so inter arytenoid fold and then ary epiglottic fold so within the laryngeal cavity we can identify two pairs of folds two pairs of folds we can identify upper folds are called as vestibular folds yes can you find here upper folds are called as vestibular folds or false vocal cords the space between the two vestibular folds or false vocal cords is called as rima vestibuli then lower folds here i am showing you the lower folds are produced by vocal ligaments and vocalis muscle are called as vocal folds or true vocal cords so space between the two vocal cords is called as rima glottidis
So the subdivision of the laryngeal cavity. What is the, what is the subdivision? So first one is a vestibule, means upper end of the epiglottis to the vestibular folds. That is called as vestibule. Then ventricle. So between the vestibular folds above, vocal folds below. Between these two, we can identify a small space called as laryngeal sinus or sinus of the larynx. Below to this laryngeal sinus is called as infraglottic part. So this, why we have to discuss about the subdivision is, if any tumor is present, in the larynx, we have to mention it exactly present at which area, either it is present in the vestibule part or ventricle or the infraglottic part. Okay, so that is about the subdivisions of the laryngeal inlet. Then coming to the arterial supply, above the vocal cord it is supplied by superior laryngeal artery, internal is a branch of superior thyroid artery, below the vocal folds it is supplied by inferior laryngeal artery, branch of inferior thyroid artery. Then coming to the venous drainage. What about the venous drainage? So venous drains, the veins that drains the venous blood into superior laryngeal vein, which drains into superior thyroid vein. Then inferior laryngeal vein drains into inferior thyroid vein. Then coming to the lymphatic drainage. So above the vocal cords, deep cervical lymph nodes, they drains into the deep cervical lymph nodes. Below the vocal cords, pierces the cricothyroid membrane and go to the pre-laryngeal and pre-tracheal nodes and then drains into lower deep cervical lymph nodes. Then here you can identify remoglottidis means the space between the two vestibular folds, remo vestibuli. Remoglottidis means the space between the two vocal folds. So this remoglottidis and phonation, so how it appears during quiet respiration, it appears like a pentagonal shape. During inspiration, it appears like the diamond shape. During high-pitched voice, it appears